um, after a few days with no videos um, and discovering a, a great new rap star on the scene, uh, maximum respect to two homes. Um, here's my videos for the day again. I've survived for the last few days on a strange product known as Blue Gummies, which sounds like some street legal drug. I ended up t typing for nearly 24 hours because I had 12,000 words of stuff to turn into a professor. And basically, I had one day left to tidy it all up, do the footnotes, do the bibliography, and I do have other things to do. So I ended up with 11,818 words, 24 pages of bibliography and loads of junk. But that's not why I'm here. Yesterday, we had some more of Simon's interesting history lessons. Well, Simon told you that not many people know that St. Patrick was a slave. Well, I suppose if you're not Catholic, it might be true, in fact. As you, but then again, St. Patrick is a fairly fa major figure in the Anglican Church as well. Perhaps the Christian heritage of the country has been eroded so much that people aren't really aware of these facts. But in any case, you couldn't really grow up if you're my age without knowing that St. Patrick was a slave. It was jammed into you about him. None of us who were Irish kids growing up in England with parents from Ireland thought St. Patrick was originally from Ireland. We weren't that stupid, nor were our parents. But just to prove the point, we shall use some materials from way, 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 way outside Ireland. As St. Patrick is, of course, a major saint in numerous traditions, including the Orthodox Church, to which my wife belongs, although she's not Greek Orthodox. She's Russian Orthodox, but I've nicked this hymn from the Greek service to St. Patrick of Ireland. As he's one, he, consider, he has a title in the Orthodox faith equal to the Apostles, which is reserved for major saints, who are considered, as the name suggests, to hold an equal status to the 12 Apostles and to be major figures. Um, I'm not going to read the whole description of it. If someone has an interest in um, church history and stuff like that, that I, and shares it with me. I'll certainly put the link there for you, but I imagine most people would fall asleep reading that lot. But here we have the start of it. Great Vespers, when as a captive wise one, you were carried away and withstood much affliction. So I think you may see that the Greeks were quite well aware that St. Patrick was carried away as a captive. They don't imagine he just wandered over there to Ireland and started telling us all to stop it the downing pints of Guinness and become good Catholics. Leaving that aside, you have his own confessions. Now, there's some debate about the authenticity of this sort of stuff when you get this far back in history, this sort of stuff. And to be quite honest, I can see why. Certainly some of it was written that, to kind of push a notion of Christianity as being the right religion to um, follow. And another version that debate is that Patrick wrote this to justify jogging off from a job he didn't want to be doing and running over to Ireland. But leaving that aside, I'll read out the first few bits. My name is Patrick. I'm a sinner, a simple country person, and the least of all believers. I am looked down upon by many. My father was Copernius, an appropriately Romano-British name. He was a deacon. His father was Potius, a priest who lived at Benavon, Talbaronia. His home was near there, and that is where I was taken prisoner. I was about 16 at the time. At that time, I did not know the true God. I was taken into captivity in Ireland along with thousands of others. We deserve this because we had gone away from God. Well, I might debate that one a bit, and did not keep his compartments. We would not listen to our priests about, just about how we could be saved. So as you can see, it's not as though this is some hidden secret knowledge. If it really has become that obscure, that speaks to a very worrying erosion of level of education. This would have been general basic knowledge when I was growing up, and I'm over 20 years younger than Simon. It wouldn't be considered any hidden or obscure knowledge, and in nothing of the kind. Okay, if you come from outside a Catholic background or uh, from a secular background, this may be stuff you're just not aware of, but... Simon threw it out there as if it was some kind of strangely obscure knowledge. Also, Simon is trying to move along with this as, as though the Irish should be paying reparations and using it as a ridiculous comparator for the transatlantic slave trade. Um, one, 
it's over a thousand years ago, and it would be very hard to work out who was who and who was related to anyone anymore. Secondly, the English themselves were noticeable for keeping slaves with the system of thraldom later. If Simon wants to go and talk about that, he can do and talk about the systems of class structure as they evolved in England as it came into being over the next few hundred years after Patrick, because England didn't exist in any real sense when Patrick was taken over the sea. It only came into existence in a very slow and gradual way with loads of kingdoms like Mercia, Domnomia, and all sorts of others w waging wars and bashing each other about a bit. Something Simon has been reluctant to talk about, and which will have provided a nice historical context to the whole thing. I'll be going on to that in a few minutes with two particular brothers to show an example of that. But this constant sort of um, attempt to move everything into silly directions with, with Simon's stuff does get a bit nonsensical at times and worrying about as I say, the level of general education in this country, if what was general education for a seven-year-old is now being considered sort of obscure, hidden knowledge, it simply isn't, Simon.